Hello everybody, this is Brad Dyg just reaching out to you and talking to you about how really versatile the, the Dell 720 XD really is as a platform. As you can see, the XD has quite a few 24 disk array footprints at which you can follow along with the two back-end uh, drives at which can be SSD or SAS, which are sitting right there. And, but all in all, this platform is impressively capable of doing quite a bit. For instance, I have IO slots here, IO slots here, and IO slots here. And I am going to be putting a lot of gear, as you can see here. Here are the Oracle F40 SSD 400 gig uh, drives, uh, which are higher performance than SSDs. Some USB 3.0 action a 10 gig high-end NIC and um, I'm going to be putting all of this gear this is two F4, uh, F, uh, F40s here one here and one in the plastic bag and they're going to fit into all of this gear here and the versatility of the system is so dynamic that you can do quite a bit with this uh, in regards to just the general one two threes and overhead and when you look at how much capacity this server can do, I have to admit sincerely that this machine is impressive. Um, it's just packed full of options. You can put in all types of platforming gear. Uh, your ability to handle these buses, as you can see here, are very impressive. And here you can see how open-ended this is as I'm removing the cards and then right here you have yourself a four bay one gig by four or you can also have what is the 10 gig by two gig which are two GBIC 10 gigs and two one gig ports but in this case, the versatility for now, we're going to be pursuing the 4 gig configuration uh, performance wise uh, because I just really want those to be running under the principle of the actual baseline connectivity only in this regard. And that allows us to be able to give all of the front end DMZ archive uh, active archiving and secondary service NICs, equivalency of basically four NICs, as you can see here. And it's really good on the one gig side, but I'm also going to have a 10 gig pipe, which I'll probably start out with first to establish it as the main IP uh, based on true genuine bandwidth access. And that's going to be quite a difference. So as you can see how empty this is and the versatility that it offers, I'm going to pause here for a second and put these components in and then show you what it looks like density wise. It's impressive. So stand by. Okay, at this point in stage, I've installed the USB output cards here for the USB 3.0 in a non active charge state. So, in other words, they're strictly 3.01 standard USB ports, and there's a lot of them, but principally, I only intend to use one or two. Secondly, you've got this little uh, full-size card set up here which is above the four port NIC but you have to be careful with this little guy right here because you have to fold them up so you can get the card into play. The back does not come out with a tray so you have to make sure that you identify that but I wanted to show this to you before I moved on to doing the smaller configuration which is going to be more impressive so I'll show you that in just a second. Hang on. Okay now we have this small profile IO cage card set up here which is basically um, a very well set up two sets of 400 gig F40 Oracle accelerator cards. Now, in my day at the data centers that I worked in, we use these as accelerators between sand storage and um, the actual interactives on Oracle and frankly, very expensive hardware, uh, to tell you the truth. Uh, to be able to use them uh, before their performance rating as boot drives 
is a great plus and you can also use it as a high-end high processing load solution as well okay so we've got all the parts in now lots of versatility lots of IO card lots of input lots of inbounds and outbounds we're not just talking discs we've got discs but that's not what this one particular chassis is for this one is about you know going to that new level and that 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 expectation which we're driving for in regards to getting uh, a high-end high IO 10 gigabit architecture utilizing a very you know direct fiber optic interface configuration along with my standard gigabit connect uh, speed configurations and you see here are the high-speed um, F40s, which are actually between SSD drives and e um, NVMe drives. So these are higher performing drives than the cache drives that the Dell platform can offer. <clears throat> so the next goal that I've got to figure out is how, you know, what compatibility issues might I have with these cards with this platform. I'll have to probably open in the BIOS a little bit more so that they're more flexible. Um, but principally right now, the system itself is not truly a functionally bootable environment right now yet but that will change so with that in mind uh, i am glad to present this platform to you as my best recommendation server wise uh, the dell 720 for server related functionals ranging from vmware high-end cpu counts 24 counts capacities of many 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 hundreds of gigs of, of RAM uh, based on the many 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 RAM uh, slots you have here um, love the base IO interface love the RAID interface controller the external output inputs extended connectivity including extended SATA which can flip to be eSATA which can connect up to archive platforms which are those three platforms up at the top that can allow you to archive off on eSATA, which is a pretty decent speed uh, when it comes to just doing the back end archiving. Then you've got your 10 gig NIC here, which is a, it's got a GBIC, it's got uh, the four on the bottom. All of this IO expansion ability, it's just a wonderful all around great motherboard slash chassis design. Do not like this, the generic 720s and the five um, three and a half inch style configurations the 720 XD is the best in my opinion that's it for me for tonight I'll let you go I hope this helped you guys understand some of the stuff that what you're looking at thanks bye